my name is Sammy. This is Unicorn Dust Designs. I am a mom, a wife, and I am a collector of all things craft supplies, which I think some of you guys can relate. And if you can relate, then stick around because today we are going to be thrifting in my garage. Yes, my garage. We just moved and I have no idea what's in the boxes out there. So it's going to be a surprise to me as much it is as it is to you. So let's go ahead and head into the garage. And I also wanted to take a quick moment to thank Ana Luisa Jewelry for sponsoring a portion of today's video. I will tell you more about them a little All later. Right, my friends, we are going into the danger zone. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> Don't judge. Do not judge. Okay. Um, so all my thrift store stuff is all the way back there. This is all the Dollar Tree stuff. We won't get into all that. My poor vanity that I don't even get to use. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's cold in here. Okay. See, this is my dad packing. I don't know. So, um, it looks like thrift glass, thrift wood, thrift, thrift. We're just going to go. I'm going to open up one of them. Probably the one closest to me. We are gonna grab the things in there to thrift. So let's see what's inside. Okay, moment of truth. Oh, okay, <laughs> I picked a good one. I picked a pretty good one. So let's see. Looks like a lot of candlesticks. Um. It looks like I have this cute mug holder. I don't think I would actually use that in our house. Handle sticks. Previous DIYs. Um, it looks like a sleigh, a base, a let's what's this? Oh god. Sure. I don't know. I feel like Let's take out one. I've had that for a while. Let, let's see what we could DIY with that. I have also had this for a long time. $4.99. And this could be an easy flip, I think. We got to commit. I don't know. But let's see what else is in here before I commit to what we are flipping. Um, more candlesticks. Like, I wonder if we can put, um, like, molds on here or something. Let's take that. Okay. That one I'll commit to. So, we got two that I'm committing to. Oh, oh, then I'm going to lose it. This is actually, which we're using actually a lot of tissue right now. I mean, the base is missing on it, but, I mean... Just set it on top. Eh, let's do it. This is going to be like such a random flip. We got... Sorry, it's so loud, you guys. Uh, here it is. So I had bought this when I was like just selling what I found on my website. I did that for a little bit and then I got pregnant and sick and stopped. And I... There was something wrong with this. It was like, oh, see the crack right there? But you know what? We can see that right there. We can glue that. Hmm, okay, let's grab that. So we have four things. That's another wood box. What's this? That is a, um, like a book, cookbook holder, the wood. Okay. And then it looks, sorry again, you guys, for the banging. More 
candlesticks, an angel. Her wings are right here. You know what? I feel like she would be pretty just one color. She looks very, um, like the different colors and stuff like that aren't, I don't know. I, don't know. I had her in my booth for quite a while and nobody bought her. So I figured maybe if I painted her white or something. Uh, I should have DIY'd this with tile wings. A caddy. This is like a recipe box too. I think you guys said that was for matches when I bought it and did a haul, but not sure. And a birdhouse. Okay, I think these would be a great start. And this is going to be a maybe. Oh, look at those. Um, okay, we're going to grab one of those. We're going to grab one. Oh, jeez. Let's grab one. Oh, I'm going to knock everything over. Okay. Um, I feel like I've had this one. Oh God, this is heavy. No, I've had this one longer. Oh my gosh. Is it the same thing? It is the same darn thing, y'all. Look at this. It is seriously the same thing. Well, you obviously know that I, I have my ways. In. I like stuff. That one was $4.99 back in the day when Savers actually had good prices. That's $6.99. But let's, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Starting off with this little gem. I cleaned it the best I could. I'm taking Goo Gone to get this foamy, sticky stuff off the back. I'm going to go ahead and get my razor blade. This had to have been on here forever because it even stained the piece. Now make sure when using Goo Gone that you do wipe off whatever is remaining off of your piece because if you paint over it, it's going to leave a very oily residue. So now I'm gonna take Sandstone by Waverly and some of you are gonna be like, that is so similar <laughs> to the color that's on here, but I don't think so. It's like the most perfect neutral color. So this first step is just basically getting one layer of the paint on. You don't have to get too detailed here. You just want to cover your piece up. The second coat that we put on is when we're gonna get our Dollar Tree stencil brush and you are going to stipple that on. I prefer stippling in this case because I don't want to see brush strokes on here. And when it dries down, I feel like it really does give it a smooth looking finish. And it's also a great way to get in all of your details. Um, as you can see here, I'm really able to get those bristles and get into all of those fine little pieces here. Now, trying something new, I'm taking my DIY clear wax. I'm gonna take some mica powder because I wanted to try giving this a shimmery look without using the gold wax. So here I am, I'm gonna put some mica powder in there and I'm going to mix it up and you will see right away how it creates this beautiful sheen on here and it's sealing your project at the same time. Now, this is beautiful and I loved it. And part of me almost wishes that I would have just kept it and stopped here. But then there's that part of me that was like, there's way too much detail in here not to apply the dark wax. So I dipped my brush in the dark wax and we put it on. Now this is where you guys need to let me know, should I have left it just the sandstone or do you prefer the dark wax to bring out all of the details in here? I, I still don't know. I still don't know. So I'm also going to grab a stencil brush so that I can get into all of the fine details because the edges of the details, that's what's going to make it pop. That's where like the dark wax is kind of going to like sit and then make the other pieces pop. So I'm taking a paper towel, I'm wiping all that excess off and you can see how it helps it lighten up, but that it's keeping all the detail pieces kind of like trimmed in that dark wax. I love, love, love my wax. Um, so now after I'm done with that, I end up grabbing some more clear wax. This is a great way, if you think there are some spots that might be dark, this is a great way of blending out your wax. And 
Well, I feel like it took away some of the shimmer because I had to wipe the excess of that dark wax off, but let me know what you think. Would you have left it just the sandstone and the shimmer? Would you have done the dark wax? And I need you guys to let me know down in comments, should I outline this with the gold wax? Because my husband, the first thing he said when he saw this was, you didn't put the gold wax on there? And I was like, mm, no, should I have? And he's like, I think it would look awesome. So tell me, because if you majority say yes, I am going to do it. And then I will post a picture for you on the community tab. So let me take a couple minutes and tell you about Ana Luisa Jewelry. I love them. They are a carbon neutral company from their packaging to their products. And that's why I'm showing you this packaging because <laughs> even the box that they come in is made out of recyclable materials and i just think that is amazing that they really care about the planet and um, what they're bringing into this world so i was able to pick four items out and uh y'all know that i love my children so i picked out this beautiful gold e for everly and ever i didn't think i needed two of them so just one e this beautiful mood stone that i was so excited to get when's the last time you had like a mood ring or a mood stone on and then the m for of course our newest edition montgomery and for those of you that have been following me for a while you know i usually actually wear a set of necklaces and when montgomery was born i was actually wearing the mama one from anna luisa and john had purchased a new one for me unfortunately that broke so I was so excited to get the opportunity to get these pieces and have my children you know close to my heart again and I also you guys look at this packaging right now Anna Luisa until January 10th is offering 20% off sidewide so this is the perfect opportunity to gift yourself or gift other people for the holidays I think anybody would be happy to receive their items because they are such high quality crafted jewelry pieces. Um, I'm going to leave the link down in the description box for you as well as a code as well. And let me show you how I layered these and how they look on. Don't mind my beautiful <laughs> freckles, but look at how gorgeous these are. And like I said, I'm a layering queen. Okay. I am not afraid to layer multiples on top of each other. Um, I love the E and the M get to be by each other. And then look at my little mood stone. It's already turning. It's already, does green mean this video is going to be successful and I'm going to get tons of money, <laughs> but I love the difference too of this chain. And then look at these y'all. I am seriously, oops, don't, don't worry about those wrinkles. Okay. I am seriously loving these earrings and I love them because they are subtle they don't hang down. I don't think that the baby will pull on them. They clasp in the back too. And I love this shade of green. I have never worn earrings like this before. And I'm thinking I need more because they're beautiful. And then the necklaces, so you know how I layered them. They have three different holes in the back. So like I have this one on the shortest, this one on medium, and then this one on the tightest one so that is how i'm able to layer these all together but i love them thank you so much anna luisa for sending me this jewelry i cannot wait to take pictures with my kids with these on and these beautiful earrings for christmas time who am i who am i joking my favorite color is green so these are going to be worn all year round <laughs> okay now we are going to get out our IOD molds and we are going to coat those with some cornstarch. Now I'm taking my paper clay and I'm putting it in there. So I thought about using resin, but resin was going to take forever because I needed at least, I think I made like 10 of these. So paper clay was it for me. And when you're using your silicone molds, you want to dust them with um, the cornstarch so they don't stick to your piece and then you that will enable you to pop them out a lot more easily so as you can see right here I coated it with the cornstarch I'm putting my paper clay in there and then I'm taking away any of the excess around there I'm going to flip over my molds 
and I am going to peel that back so that our mold comes out. Now, I saw on Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots, I'll leave her link down in the description box, she actually used this mold and cut them in half. And I was like, what a great way of using this mold in a different way. And that's what I like you guys about watching other creators because I just never thought about using this mold and then like cutting these in half. I only saw them as like one piece. So always take a chance and watch new channels. I think that is the, uh, the point behind this story. <laughs> so I cut these in half. And after I'm done with that, we are going to grab the little bowl thingy we picked out. I'm going to pull that towards me so you guys could see. And I'm just checking to see if I have enough of these or if I need to spread them out or what needs to happen in order for these all to fit. And I ended up making enough. And this is a great way of totally bringing this um, to life again. So after I'm done, I am going to take my Starbond super glue and these are still wet. So I have not allowed these to dry yet. And the reason that is, is because you will see as I glue these down, I am going to push the edges of them into the bowl. That way it is curving to the bowl and they're not just sticking out straight. Um, so you can see like the ones on the right, the corners, are straight. This way I'm able, while they're still wet, to kind of mold them and push them down into the bowl. It fits perfectly, it was gorgeous. So after that dries, I let this dry overnight. I am gonna go basic with this, okay? I wanted this to be able to go with anything I choose to put inside of it. So I'm using Prairie Gray by DIY, which has become one of my new favorite gray colors. It dries down so beautifully. And I am going to do the white wax. I know you guys are probably like, that's so boring. But I wanted to be able to keep this out and just kind of change up what goes inside of it. So I wanted it to be a pretty neutral color. So painting that with a synthetic brush, and then I'm gonna go up top, make sure that I get all into those details. If a little bit of white is still showing, it's not really a big deal because we will be adding the white wax to it. And y'all know I get my stuff from Upcycled by Brie and she's in the description box as usual. Go check out her channel too because you'll learn a lot more about this paint and the waxes than I could ever teach you. So now I'm going to take my white wax and I'm going to dust that on there. Now, I wanted you guys to know that when you apply wax to something, that is your sealer. You do not need to put a polyacrylic over it or a clear matte spray. This is sealing your paint for you. So wanted to let you know that. And you can also apply clear wax first. It will darken up the color of your piece a little bit, but it will make the white wax easier to move, I guess you can say. So I do the inside as well, because again, we want to do the entire piece, and then I will do the outside. I'm not gonna make you guys watch all of that, you know? And here's how she turned out. Sorry about this angle, but when I had her like sitting right, you couldn't really see the details on the top, but how pretty is this? We took something that was $2.99 plain, probably going in the garbage, and we updated it with one medallion like mold. And it's beautiful. And I can't wait to put something inside of it when I find my decor. <laughs> All right, this one, we are going to play around with the IOD paint and lace. And I've had this one for quite some time and I don't know why I haven't used it because it's Gorga. So we're gonna take that tissue cover thing that we found in the garage. And I was able to use one sheet to completely wrap around the box. And then we're gonna use another sheet for the in pieces. So right here, I laid my box down and then I marked it, the corners off, so that I know where to lay it back down. Then I am going to flip it over on its side and I am going to trace out the sides of the boxes so that I get the right fit. These also have grids on the back of them, which makes it really easy to cut and, you know, do different shapes and stuff. So after I am done cutting these, or you know what, I wanted to tell you guys, because some of you are probably like, what's pain and lay? 
So this sheet is actually paint. And when it is infused with wet paint, it transfers on to that paint and it creates the most beautiful piece. So we are using white chalk paint by Waverly. You want to put a healthy coat, but you do not want this like dripping. You don't want it pushing out the edges. You just want a healthy coat. And I've found that you need to smooth your brush strokes out. Okay. Now we're going to lay the bright side of your paint and lay down and you're going to smooth it out. Another thing I have learned, you got y'all, if you've been here, have known that I've tried this quite a few times without success. So I've learned that when you spritz the water on here, you need to make sure all of the image is bright again. If there's any matte areas, that means it's probably not wet and you need to make sure the image gets wet and then you pat the excess of that water off with a paper towel. Now I'm going to do this top part. Now you want to do paint inlays in sections if you have a bigger piece because if the paint is not wet, the inlay will not work. So I painted the top. I'm going to lay that face down. I'm going to press it. I'm going to flip it and smooth it out just like we did the other sides. Now we're going to go onto the side. Like I said, we need to do this in sections so that it works for us. And I'm going to go over to the side and I'm going to do another layer of paint. Now, when you press down your image, you should not have paint like spewing out the, the sides. Okay. You just want enough paint that like it's going to fuse. Now I'm taking that spray bottle again with just water and I'm spritzing it on, patting the excess off with water. So you can see how it brightens up again. And then we tap, tap, tap it off. Okay. Now you let it dry. Don't let it dry overnight. I've learned that lesson and you want everything to brighten up. Once you get that done, you want to leave it for about three minutes so that that water reactivates it. So, cause you don't want to pill up dry paper. Okay. So after that sets for three minutes, y'all, I finally got it. I finally got it. Look at this. Sorry, that's most boring. Look at how beautiful. Oh my gosh. And this shows, y'all know that the ones that have been watching for a while, I have been trying paint and lay after paint and lay, and I can never get it. One of the Christmas videos, I finally got one. And this one too was like, am I going to get this? And look at how stunning. Save those papers. You can use it again. Now, I decided I'm going to clear it with this matte clear spray paint cleared it. You guys look at what happened. It turned pink. It turned pink. I was so sad. And then when I flipped the box around, I guess I wasn't paying attention, but for some reason, the like plywood that this is made out of was red. So that came through and lesson learned. You should always spray wood pieces with shellac. Um, so now I'm using my clear wax cause I'm like, we have to cover this up. I want to make this usable. I decided to take the gray wax thinking gray and blue are going to look good together. But when I wiped it off, you can still see the pink. So I had to dip into the dark wax. Um, I was really bummed because I was going for that bright white with the blue. And I was really like so happy how it turned out. And then that pink happened, but I wasn't going to let that get me down. So I grabbed this, wiped off the excess and sure enough, it did cover up that pink for us. So I was really happy with that. Um, but y'all will have to tell me, like, would you have preferred it with the dark wax on it? Or were you all about that bright white and this blue? Because I feel we're going to be painting our bookshelves a blue color. Not sure if it's going to be this blue, but I was just really like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I have to change this. And you guys know there was not a bottom to this. If I put this in my booth, I will make a bottom for it. But since it was at my house, I didn't really mind. But you could still see this paint and lay is absolutely gorgeous. I do like how it turned out. Not what I expected, but sometimes, you know, the unexpected is what's awesome. All right, you guys. So we're halfway through the video. You have seen that... Um, not everything has been working out for me in this video. And you know what? That's okay. 
I like to leave my mistakes in my videos because I like to show that it's not always going to go our way, but that's what's awesome about us being creative people. Uh, we're able to think of ways to turn it around, to make it work. And at the end of the day, it's just paint y'all. It's just paint. Okay. Like let's not, you know, cry over spilt milk is what my mom would say. Uh, but I hope that you guys get inspired by these make them your own. Maybe you've learned a new technique. I don't know if you guys enjoy these thrift fit flip videos, please comment down below. Uh, all of my links are down in the description box for TikTok. We have a Facebook group as well. Um, I also have a website for my SVG files and um, the links for like the DIY waxes and like the iron orchid design stuff. Those are all in the description box as well. You just have to read through all the stuff that's in there. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy the video and let's get back into it. The last garage flip is this $1.99 wood candle. I found this when um, my friend Tina came and visited me at like a random thrift store. I cleaned it all up. Now I'm going to take Hey Sailor by DIY Paint. This dries down to be such a beautiful blue. And my vision, y'all, was um, this beautiful dark wood. I got this beautiful blue to go with those paint inlays. And then I was going to use um, white milk paint, okay? So that we would have this chippy look and you would see all these beautiful colors. Well, just wait. So the milk paint is from Upcycled by Brie. So is the Bond. And you're supposed to mix equal parts, the, the milk paint powder and water and stir and stir and stir and it's supposed to thicken up. Uh, this is my second time try it. The first time I actually was successful using it, this time not so much, but I will say that I feel like it should be one part of the powder and then half of that with water. Um, and then I am putting the bonding agent in there as well. So I kept mixing this. I let it sit for 15 minutes, came back, still watery. So I added a little bit more of the milk paint powder, mix it up, let it set again, still watery. And I know Brie has said you could stick it in the refrigerator to help it thicken, but like this stuff would not thicken up. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe this was how it was supposed to be and I'm just not remembering. So I decided to go for it. So I take my chip brush and I start applying. Right away, I know this ain't right because it seriously looked like I had taken white chalk paint and mixed it with water. You can see like it, it, oh, it looks so awful. And I was like, but you know, maybe, maybe it's supposed to look like this and it'll start chipping. No, it did not. I applied my heat gun to it. Still no chippiness happening. So then I got my sanding block because last time when I applied my sanding block, all I had to do was tap the darn thing and a bunch of paint would fall off. This paint literally did not want to come off. Okay. I sanded it and I was sanding hard. You guys, I don't know if I used too much of the bonding agent or I didn't let it thicken up. It, those of you that use milk paint, please, please leave me some, um, info down in the comments. So now I'm like, okay, all right, we'll, we'll keep going. So then I take candle wax and I'm like, we're going to distress it this way. So I rub the candle all over the place. Then I take plaster by Waverly and I paint all over it. And I'm thinking when I get that shipping tape and pull it off, then I'll be able to see all of these beautiful colors. Well, you guys look at this. I take it. No, nothing. I take it. Oh, one chip. And I take it again. You guys, this, <laughs> it did absolutely nothing. It was almost like that milk paint and that bonding agent I had used. I don't know, made this like concrete. It won't, it wasn't going anywhere. I got so desperate. You guys, I tried duct tape. Then the duct tape stuck to the dang candlestick and that took forever to get off. Then this was my last ditch effort. I got the paint inlay that we just used. Cause remember you can use these a couple times. The image will just show up lighter. And I put a little bit of paint on there, smoothed it out the same process that we did with the other one, spritzed it with water, and then tap the excess off. And I'm gonna do this in random spots on the candle here. And this, I felt like, okay, maybe this will just kind of like tie the colors in, what you can see, and it'll make it look like all of this 
was on purpose. So I'm going to tilt the candle for you right here and just show you that like I am literally going in random spots, just putting a light amount of paint because I don't want the images to be too dark because in a distress piece, it really wouldn't look like that. So I let it dry and then now I'm coming in and spritzing them with water again and we'll go on once that sets for a little bit and peel them up. Now you can see it's just the light, light transfer of the image. And I love how this turned out because it almost looks like the whole candle had this image on it at one point and it has slowly faded away over time. So this just goes to show you, you guys, that like just because it doesn't work out the first time, or the second time or the third time we have crafty minds we're capable of anything and it's definitely not what i expected but i absolutely love how it turned out and you can still see so many details in the paint inlays and this wasn't even me like using a lot of paint and pressure i just wanted the lightest image possible of these paint inlays and I really do love how it turned out. Let me know what you think of this candlestick down in the comments. I appreciate y'all so very much. Thank you for being here with me today. And please make sure to check out Anna Luisa's link down in the description box. Um, and you guys have an amazing holiday. Just an update um, because I know that you guys have been so supportive of our family and during this time when we've been sick. Um, Everly and Everett are happy and healthy. I have finally had a week where I feel better. Poor Montgomery though is still struggling. We've had to um, get her um, asthma or um, yeah, um, an inhaler, an inhaler. And she has to have a breathing mask. So we have to do breathing treatments and that's every four hours. We also had to do eye drops and that's three times a day because, you know, from her wiping her snot and then like it going in her face, um, she ended up having an eye infection in both of her eyes as well. So, and I promise, like I clean my kid up and all that stuff, but like this stuff is coming out uncontrollably and she's having problems sleeping at night. So we still have to do the saline, sucking the nose, um, the poor girl is like getting poked and prodded everywhere every like four hours at night it's worse she can't stop coughing at night so john and i are taking turns um you know like walking her around trying to soothe her and it's just been a long journey and i feel so bad because you know she's just not her happy self she's not smiling she doesn't want to go in her jumper uh she doesn't really want to be put down at all she just wants to be with me and yeah, it, it's been a struggle, but you know, things are looking up. And I think all of you guys that have been watching my videos, you know, in um, helping us, you know, so that I can take days off and stuff from filming so that I can be with my sick children and so I could get better myself. So I appreciate you all very, very much. And I'm so lucky to have a community as passionate and thoughtful as you guys. So thank you so much. I appreciate you all. I hope you have a very, very, very happy holiday. I know the holidays are tough on some people. So just know my heart is with you on um, this holiday season. And I just hope that you're able to smile at one point or another um, this Christmas. So I'll see you guys later. Okay, now I need to, I just, oh, it's turning green. Isn't that beautiful?